because thanks to the melting of the ice pack, a new sea route has appeared. The Northeast Passage, allowing cargo ships to link Asia to Europe via the South in 20 days instead of 40. A sea route the Kremlin wants to control. For this endeavor, Putin has begun to remilitarize the whole region. In less than 15 years, former military bases of the USSR have been renovated and four new ones built, one of which is located on the island of Kotelny. This is the Northern Clover, the largest and most spectacular base, painted in the nation's colors. It is the undisputed pride of the Northern Fleet, the army controlling the entire Russian Arctic. The base can accommodate up to 250 men. The Ministry of Defense has invited around 20 journalists to the base, both Russian and Western. On the program, a demonstration of Russian strength. And a presentation of the latest model of missile truck. The message of this organized visit is crystal clear. The Kremlin wants to show the world that the Arctic is its newest hunting ground. But NATO won't sit back as Russia presents itself as the only dominant power in the region. A spectacular display is on the way. Let's head to Norway, one of the eight states in the Arctic bordering Russia. It is now March 2022, one month after the outbreak of war in Ukraine. A French warship, the Dixmude, awaits in the middle of the fjord. Menace missile, menace missile. Altitude 200, heading 150. And on the aircraft, your intention are not clear. You're approaching a collision warship. La piste vient de breaker à l'ouest. Fin de la menace. End of the alert. And end of the exercise. There are no enemy aircraft. The Dixmude is not at war, but it may as well be. The French helicopter is participating in a large-scale NATO operation. It is simulating a war in the Arctic where Norway has just been involved by a powerful enemy army. NATO armies have one goal, to rescue it. The mission is called Cold Response. Its aim, to train NATO armies to fight north of the Arctic Circle. Radar, est-ce qu'on a des pistes sur la prochaine route? Captain Emmanuel Mouka is in command of the Dixmoo. He considers the exercise more than justified. Today, the French Navy has to be completely ready to conduct combat in the open sea, in the Arctic or elsewhere. Dans les espaces maritimes, ça fait quand même 10 ou 15 ans qu'on s'aperçoit que les, les relations entre les États se durcissent et que le combat d'aval est redevenu une hypothèse de travail. Vraiment, vraiment. On sent les, tens, enfin, les rapports qui se durcissent. En tout cas, ce qui est sûr, c'est qu'on insiste à un réarmement naval euh, de nombreux pays à travers le monde. Et on sait, on sait que les tensions sont, sont présentes. Bonjour à tous. Repos. Allez, c'est parti. And in the fjords, the ship's captain really will be conducting a war operation as he organizes the landing of a French army regiment on a Norwegian beach. On board the ship are 300 men of the 1st Rima, the regiment of marine infantry and more than 80 combat vehicles, including three AMX-30 tanks. 
the Dixmude is not only a helicopter carrier, it also has landing crafts. With the tanks on board, they speed along the fjords at almost 50 kilometers an hour. The crew get to experience firsthand the extreme climatic conditions of the Arctic because the Dixmude is based in Toulon and was therefore designed to maneuver the Mediterranean. The weather in the fjords is changeable and erratic, but it's absolutely essential that all of the men and armor reach the shore before nightfall. The operation will last eight hours. On the shore, the inhabitants of this small fishing village watch the ship approach with interest. Since the start of the war in Ukraine, the Norwegians who live here have been wary of a possible Russian invasion. I don't want to think about it, but uh, I think about it more than I want. We are a small country. We are a long country, but not so many people. And uh, Russia is big. So yes, I think about it. So NATO is more important now? Yes. We are very happy that NATO is uh, around here. Why are you really happy? Yeah, you can see in Ukraine what is happening. We have a border to uh, Russia in the north, so you never know. Putin is crazy. Putin, a crazy man. So it means you feel safer? Of course. Of course. At the same time, only 20 kilometers away from the French arrivals, more soldiers are landing on the beach. These are the U.S. Marines, coming directly from North Carolina with their amphibious vehicles and their well-practiced speeches. I think the Marine Corps is always ready, uh, regardless of the status in the world. The United States Marine Corps is a force in readiness. We are ready at a moment's notice to act anywhere around the globe. And that's why exercises like cold response are so important to who we are. We are prepared, ready, postured, and prepared to operate in the high north when needed. 35,000 soldiers from 28 allied countries are taking part in this operation. Here, they'll face a genuine enemy. Hiding in the mountains, in ambush, appear the Norwegian army playing the role of the bad guy. Their tanks are equipped with thermal cameras and their camouflage techniques are perfectly adapted to the Nordic environment. They are ready to confront the NATO troops. We will uh, do a uh, slow down the enemy for uh, quite a distance uh, north. And uh, when we have Done that, we'll uh, regroup and prepare for an uh, attack. The Norwegians are playing at home in climatic conditions they could navigate with their eyes closed. A normal winter up here, it goes down to minus 30, minus 35, and uh, we're uh, more than capable to fight in that uh, environment. But the other army, you think they can? Uh, with a little practice, like uh, we're doing now, they uh, will uh, be able to, <laughs> yeah. The battle will last two weeks over an area as big as a French overseas department. We have one, two, three, four objectives. Okay. Boasting warships and submarines, tanks, helicopter gunships and fighter jets, NATO's strength is truly spectacular. Okay, Guillaume, c'est bon? For Colonel Le Gouvelot, okay. who's leading the French offensive, the challenge is not only to get used to the region's extreme weather conditions, 
After years of war against terrorist groups, the French army needs to prepare itself to fight against regular armies again, armies that are modern and well-equipped. On a fait beaucoup d'opérations en Afrique, en Afghanistan, etc. C'était euh, c'était pas du combat haute intensité. Donc là, on se réoriente vers du combat de haute intensité, euh, vers la confrontation avec un ennemi qui est à parité avec nous. Et, euh, et dans, en ce sens, finalement, cet exercice, c'est exactement ça. C'est-à-dire que l'ennemi auquel on est confronté a autant de capacités que nous, et dans certains domaines, parfois, il nous est supérieur. The enemy everyone is thinking about is, of course, Russia. But for diplomatic reasons, none of the soldiers on the field refers to it. In Paris, at the Ministry of Defense, the discourse is far more direct. For General Lani, spokesman for the general staff, the development of military force is sending a direct message to Moscow. L'Arctique est un espace de compétition. Ce n'est pas encore un espace de, de confrontation ou d'affrontement. Aujourd'hui, c'est un espace de compétition. C'est un peu comme le jeu de go ou un jeu d'échecs, suivant ce qu'on qu choisit. Et en fait, euh, chacun place ses pions. Ce que font les Russes en ouvrant des bases ou en montrant ce dont ils sont capables, ce que fait l'OTAN en montrant ce dont elle est capable. Est-ce que vous pensez que la Russie a compris le message alors, je ne sais pas si la Russie a compris le message, il faudrait leur poser la question. Une chose est certaine, c'est que nous avons montré, l'OTAN a montré que l'organisation était capable de projeter plusieurs dizaines de milliers d'hommes dans un scénario de haute intensité à plusieurs dizaines de milliers de kilomètres des bases, des unités. Et ça, ça c'est un vrai signal stratégique. À any rate, le message a été bien reçu par les pays countries. Two months after the end of the exercise, Sweden and Finland officially applied for NATO membership. 